Hey YouTube, Zero Magnum X here. Uh, I went to the Innistrad pre-release and picked up some stuff. This isn't like generally from it. Hang on a second. It's like a stacks over here of cards, and then the Innistrad stuff is mixed in over there. This is a uh, deck I constructed from stuff I got. It's I wouldn't probably suggest taking it to a high class tournament as I don't think it would win. But this is just a four fun zombie deck. I'm going to go over what each card is, why it's in here, and then also explain what you may want to run and why I don't have it yet. <laughs> okay, so alright, first up is this guy. That's Jace Memory Adept. I'm only running one of him uh, for a few reasons. One, he's a five drop. He's only got uh, four loyalty, so people might be willing to throw two shocks on it just to kill it, and that's two mana compared to his five. On top of that, Mana Leak is in the game and he's a 5-drop, so Mana Leak for 2 can counter him. So he's really just there to do some hand-drawn control and mill 10 cards for 0 and stuff like that. It's just, that's the general idea, and it'll explain why milling the 10 cards is good. The next one up is a new card. This is Turpination Blade. Uh, this is a pseudo Sword of Body and Mind. I'd, if you have Sword of Body and Mind and Sword of Feast and Famine, I'd run two Body and Mind and one Feast and Famine for this kind of deck. But I don't, so I'll probably run three Sword of Body and Mind, given Feast and Famine is like 20 pushing $30. And Sword of Body and Mind's about 8 to 10. Alright, next up, Walking Corpses are Fillers. Okay, for the next guy, I'd run four of this one. Uh, he's a one drop for a two two that comes into play tap. His name is uh, Dire Graphical. He's pretty good. Okay, next up is Eventual Pharaoh. Really good card. I gotta check the Rollins to be more sure on what happens with his effect, and I'll read the effect to you since you can't hear it. All right, he's a five four with Death Touch. Four five, three black men and two in here. Right. Whenever combat damage is dealt to you or Planeswalker you control, if Vengeful Pharaoh is in your graveyard, destroy target attacking creature and then put Vengeful Pharaoh on top of your graveyard. Here's the thing. I think if they deal combat damage, they've already declared their attack and have attacked. Okay, they've already attacked and have gotten damage in. So he may not be able to fulfill his requirement and go back to the top of the deck if only one creature is swinging at you. However, if two creatures are swinging at you, he does his effect. That's what I think I could be wrong, but that's how I understand it. Okay, next up, uh, my boss monster of the deck, Cemetery Reaper. He's a 3-drop for a 2-2, two, 2-black two, two and 1-any. One he gives all their zombies, which is a zombie deck, plus 1, plus 1. And then his effect is I get to tap him, pay uh, one black and two any, exile a uh, creature card from anywhere, and generate a 2-2 two, two black zombie token, which would automatically become a 3-3 three, three because of his effect. Okay, over here then. Zombie infestation. Okay, it allows me, it's a simple enchantment to drop, it, which means it stays on the field, and I can discard two cards to put a zombie into play. If I wanted to, first turn, or second turn rather, I could discard my entire hand and put three 2-2 two, two zombies into play. I don't suggest that unless you've got some amazing strategy behind it, but it helps to get Vengeful Pharaoh and other things in the graveyard to play another card uh, called Stitch Drake, which I have here, and I'll explain why soon. Okay, the next one is Unbreathing Horde. Uh, he kind of helps with the whole uh, zombie infestation as well. He gets... He comes into play with a 1-1 counter for every zombie you control and every zombie in your graveyard. So he can get kind of nice, and if he'd be dealt any kind of combat damage or damage at all, instead you simply remove a 1-1 counter from him and prevent that damage. So if he's a 3-3 and you hit him for something that would hit his 3 toughness, he wouldn't die. He'd turn into a 2-2 two -two then. Okay, next up is my multicolored guy. Grimgrin uh, Corpseborn. This is Frankenstein in the Innistrad. Uh, I'll explain why he's, why I like him and why he's bad at the same time. I like him because he's Frankenstein and I think he's got a lot of potential behind what he can do. Given that my deck generates zombie tokens and so on, and if I get the swords up and running, uh, wolf tokens, he can be a good thrower. He's only another one of because he's a 5-drop just like Jace. Okay, 
He, he's a five drop for five five. He's a legendary, so you can't have more than one of him on the field. And he comes into play tapped. He doesn't untap during your untap step. But if you destroy a creature that you control, he untaps and gets plus one plus one. So in theory, you can untap him as many creatures as you're willing to sacrifice. And as well, whenever he attacks, he destroys a target. Cre he destroys a creature that my opponent controls, and then gets plus one plus one. So if I have two zombies out with him, and I uh, sack one, make him a six six swing for six damage, kill theirs. He becomes a seven seven, destroy another one, and untap. He becomes an eight eight for five. If I'm willing to give up the other two, so he can get bigger and bigger. All right, next up. Typical counter spells, mana leaks, these are what I was talking about, and cancels. Uh, mana leak, you pay to you, you counter target spell unless they pay three mana. Uh, in this game, for those who are Yu-Gi-Oh players, it's like Solemn Warning. A negation stops, or a counter spell makes it so the card never hits the field. And it cancels any spell, and they can't pay, and then it costs uh, two blue and one any. All right, down here. He's my bread and butter of the deck. This is this guy turns zombies into virtual gods, okay? And I'll explain why. I'll read him. He's a 4-2 for 3. If a zombie you control would deal combat damage to a player, instead, so that means they don't actually deal damage, that player puts that many cards from the top of his or her library into her graveyard. A library in this game is a deck. Now you might think, okay, well, that's kind of... All right, but his secondary effect is what makes him really good. All right, whenever a creature card is put into an opponent's graveyard from his or her library, that means if it would be milled from their deck, okay, and that includes by any effect that includes Jace's effect, that includes Sword of Body Minds, Sword of Body and Minds effect. All right, so it's just if they go to the graveyard. That's also why Turpination Blade is in here. You exile, which that's banishing in magic, guys. Okay, so it's removing from play. That creature, and you gave yourself a 2-2 black zombie. So let's say I mill, because what would happen, all right, virtually, Undead Alchemist hits turn five, you equip, equip uh, Sword of Body and Mind, or turn four, He because he can't attack. Turn five, you put Sword of Body and Mind on. He's a six, four, protection blue and green, and he attacks. Let's say he deals his six damage, all right? He mills 10 cards with Sword of Body and Mind plus six. Out of those 16 cards I just took off the top of their deck, any creature that's in there, I just instantly remove from play, and I get two two black zombies. So probably they'll probably hit between five and eight creatures with that. So I'll have the next turn the ability to mill between uh, 36 to like 42 cards. So. I can win almost turn six with that effect. That's why he's really good, if all my guys get through. Uh, Stitch Drakes are pretty good. You just exile a, a creature card from your graveyard to cast it, and it's a three drop for a three, four flyer. Flyers are good. Okay, the next card, uh, they're neat because you can pay two life instead of paying the mana cost. You get to look at your opponent's hand, so you get to see what they have, and you can set up for it. And on top of that, you draw a card. Really nice. And then the last one's on summon. It just returns a creature card to their hand. All right, guys. Well, that's the overall deck profile that I'm playing with and having fun with. And take care. Zero Magnum X out.